At the neuromuscular junction, the neuron releases a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine to be received by the acetylcholine receptor that is found along the sarcolemma. In order to avoid an immediate depolarization after the acetylcholine receptor has received the neurotransmitter, there is an enzyme called acetylcholine esterase, which is an enzyme that breaks down the acetylcholine into acetyl or an acetate and a choline and restore it back to the neuron end bulb where it's rebuilt and stored in the synaptic vesicle again. The enzyme that breaks down the acetylcholine is acetylcholine esterase. And the reason for that is so that depolarization and repolarization occurs and it does not allow an immediate muscle contraction afterwards. During the muscle contraction, ATP is needed. During the ATP pump, that pumps calcium into uh, back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. ATP is needed for the power stroke, and it's also needed for the myosin head to detach. So there are three ways we're going to find energy sources for the muscle contraction. And the three ways are aerobic cellular respiration, creatine phosphate, and by anaerobic cellular respiration. At rest, the ATP is produced by aerobic cellular respiration. Aerobic referring as with oxygen. Glyco glycogen muscle glycogen found within the muscle gets broken down into glucose. This glucose then is broken down into two pyruvic acids, molecules. By glucose breaking down the, into pyruvic acid, this is known as glycolysis, one of the steps of aerobic cellular respiration. If muscle glycogen is not available, adipose cells are broken down into fatty acid and an alcohol. If you recall, adipose cells are triglycerides. Any proteins are then broken down into amino acids. The glucose, the fatty acid, and the amino acids then travels, to, uh, and the pyruvic acid then travels to the mito mitochondria with oxygen in order to produce ATP. The aerobic cellular respiration is the most efficient energy source. So there is enough energy produced for over 10 minutes of muscle activity for each muscle cell. We end up with 36 to 38 molecules of ATP.
any extra or the ATP is used for the muscle contractions. Any small amount of ATP is used for muscle contraction to maintain muscle tone and muscle posture. The second form or energy source for muscle contraction is going to be creatine phosphate. What happens is that if there is any extra ATP, it's used to form creatine phosphate. For instance, if you eat and you go back to if you eat and you go to sleep, what happens is that you have all this extra ATP that you're not using up to to you're not using up the ATPs. So ATP is broken down with an enzyme called ATPase. It breaks down ATP into ADP and a phosphate group. Then this phosphate group binds with creatine and the enzyme for this is called creatine kinase so the phosphate group that we got from the ATP we added it with creatine along with an enzyme called creatine kinase now forms creatine phosphate. Any energy that's stored within the creatine phosphate is stored within the bond of the creatine phosphate. So when the body needs the phosphate to produce ATP, the creatine is broken down back into creatine and the phosphate group. Now this phosphate group can bind with ATP, ADP, excuse me, to form ATP. Sorry about that. So here's the creatine phosphate. We break it down into creatine and the phosphate. The stored energy found in creatine phosphate, we're going to break it down. Now we have this free phosphate group that can bind with ADP to form ATP. As someone begins to exercise, the ATP in the muscle cells are usually the first one that's used. During exercise, ATP is actually provided by aerobic cellular respiration, aerobic as in breathing. Energy stored by the creatine phosphate is also used for the muscle contraction when it's needed. And it all starts out with the excess ATP that's then broken down. That's then broken down. The source, the third energy source for muscle contraction is anaerobic cellular respiration. <laughs> 
Anaerobic means without oxygen. Without oxygen. So during extreme exercises, aerobic, anaerobic, excuse me, anaerobic cellular respiration provides only a small amount of ATP that can only sustain muscle contraction for only a short amount of time. What happens is that the muscle glycogen is broken down into glucose. The glucose is then broken down into pyruvic acid again. Two molecules of pyruvic acid. And since we're not using oxygen, we only end up with a small amount of ATP, not as efficient as the aerobic cellular respiration, which produces 36 to 38. Here, we only gained perhaps two ATPs. This is only enough energy into pyruvic acid, which then breaks down into lactic acid, And this is just enough. It produces four ATPs, which is only enough for 30 seconds of muscle activity. Uh, when there's not enough oxygen available, the pyruvic acid converts to the lactic acid. And then the lactic acid then diffuses into the bloodstream where it travels to the liver, where it's converted back to glucose. So anaerobic cellular respiration is only for short spurts, not as efficient as, as aerobic cellular respiration. So there you have it, the three sources, the three energy sources of ATP for muscle contraction is aerobic cellular respiration, creatine phosphate, and anaerobic cellular respiration.